Greetings, Warrior, and welcome to the Getting Started Quick and Dirty video for War Riders, the most exciting MMO RPG, kill, 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 murder, 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 blockchain game that's out there right now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, go through the basics of some different settings when you run into your account, when you get your account set up. And then we're going to go into the wasteland and I'm going to give you a little crash course on how everything works and things to watch out for. So here we are on the website just because it had some pretty background dots on there, but now we're ready to get into our account. So let's do that. And here we are logged into our account. The first thing we see is the list of vehicles that we have. And then we have some weapons that we have in our account as well. And then we have some garages that we can spawn from. So before we actually go into the wasteland, there's a few things we need to do uh, with the settings. And the first thing is going to this gear icon. And then uh, you're going to choose your resolution that you want to run at. Now, this can be a pretty an intense game in terms of graphics and system resources. So don't be afraid to use low resolutions such as 1280 by 720, uh, which is a good one. And then 1920 by 1080 is pretty standard uh, that you can use. I'm using uh, full 4K because I have the RTX 3090 running in my computer. And frame rate's really important in this game because if your computer is lagging or messing up, it can cause you to die more often and, and do less damage to the enemy. So say the rumors. So choose your resolution, make sure it's good. And then uh, also this drop down is the user interface scale or UI scale. Now I put it down to 100% because there's a glitch uh, in the game menu systems. When it's higher than 100%, you can't see like the labels of things. So what this will do is this will change the scaling of the user interface when you're actually in the wasteland. This will affect things like the size of your health bar, how big it is on your screen, the size of your targeting reticle, how big that is on the screen. And so if your targeting reticle is too small, you can come in here and make that bigger. What I what I like to do is I think that it's uh, uh, in 1080p, I like to put that at 150%, and then 4K, I like to put this at 200%. And so that's what I have that set as. And then graphics quality is also important because it's gonna dictate frame rate. The game should be running at 60 frames per second at all times. Uh, you can see how the frame rate drops by pressing F1, which will allow this uh, mo monitoring uh, window to appear in the top right corner. And this will tell you what your frame rate is during a fight while you're driving around. If you're dropping under 60, you should play around with the graphic quality. So I like to put it at high because it's the highest level before or you get smoke trails on rockets at very high and ultra. These smoke trails can blind you and make it so that it's hard for you to see the enemy and aim far away rockets at them. So I don't put very high or ultra. I just put high. But I have a good graphics card, so I'm putting high. You may be down to like a low uh, if you're on like a regular graphics card or you know a laptop with an integrated graphics chip you might be on low and possibly even very low. Projectile effects uh, can solve some bugginess if you uncheck this. I think this does things like throwing rocks into the air when a rocket hits the ground and things like that. That's what projectile effects does. So down here you have the audio settings. Uh, there's music in the wasteland uh, and in the menu system and also there's voices that, that play when you spawn vehicles. I turn off music and I turned off voice. This is the standard operating procedure for me. And then I have sound still checked. Now, since we're on the topic of sound, okay, uh, we need to do one thing with the game. This is somewhat of an alpha of, a game, of the game. So it doesn't have certain creature comforts like an audio mixer that's in-game or a mouse sensitivity dial that's in-game. So what you need to do is you need to go to your Windows uh, soundboard or uh, sound control panel and change the volume of this game, make it really low because the sound is like way too loud for other system sounds or hearing people on Discord. Now the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna press Alt-Tab, well I, I will, and then uh, right click on the uh, audio icon in the top right, you're gonna see Volume Mixer where you're gonna open that and then you're going to be able to choose individual programs. Now you'll see that everything else is normal 
right? Normal, normal, normal. Except War Riders, which is way down here at like six. Sometimes I have it down at two. Uh, but let's put the here, let's put this at the highest level so that the numbers are real. Okay. So here it says 19. Okay. Now I'll do anywhere from 10 to 19. Uh, and when the volume is, is at maximum, then as the volume goes down, it's going to automatically scale this down to like, you know, six or whatever it is when you're scaling the audio down. But you need to do this. If you don't do this, you won't be able to hear anybody on Discord. And whenever other, other sounds come into play, they're going to be really, really quiet. And you could like blow out your eardrums. Make sure you do that stuff. Okay, next is uh, the mouse settings. Okay, so this game does not have any type of mouse sensitivity settings. You can see right here that I have, oh, you cannot see right here because I need to launch Razer Synapse. I just did a system update. But uh, you're gonna need a specialized mouse. If you just have like a regular like Office Max mouse uh, that does not have sensitivity settings, you're gonna have a hard time playing this game even on the lowest mouse settings. Uh, you can go in Windows. Uh, you can go in Windows and you can manually change your mouse settings down, but even at the lowest setting, like my wife was still having a lot of trouble with the game. It's still very like touchy, very sensitive. So you're gonna need a gaming mouse, like a Razer or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna show you real quick how to change your mouse settings if you don't have a gaming mouse, okay? This is gonna be your best bet to play the game. Because you physically cannot play the game at your standard window settings. Now you'll see that you'll see that uh, I'm changing the overall Windows mouse setting, okay, and making it really low. And so when you're not playing the game, it's really annoying. You're going to have to change it back. However, uh, if you don't have a gaming mouse, this is the only way to really play the game, okay? And even when it's on the lowest setting, it might not be slow enough for you to even play the game. Now, for those people who have gaming mice, good for you. We don't need to worry about that. All we need to do is in our gaming mouse settings, we need to make sure that we can allow uh, custom sensitivities, which we can do here. Okay, in sensitivity, okay? So I have actually a button that goes in between like normal windows, I, I call that 1700, and then actually inside the wasteland playing the game, you know, with my targeting reticle, I have that down to 500. Many players in the game, I'm on the low side because I'm just old, okay? So I have low sensitivities in Apex, I have low sensitivities in this game. You might have your sensitivity at somewhere around 800, uh, 800 perhaps, or maybe 700, maybe even 900. 500 is pretty low. But I'm a sniper guy, I rocket snipe, I need low sensitivity. Okay, so now every time I press this button on my mouse, the specialized button on my mouse, you're gonna see that it's hot swapping between, you know, my my in windows and then in game. In windows, in game. Okay, great. So we've gone over all the settings. Now there is one possible uh, thing that can go wrong, okay, in the game, uh, where your game might completely mess up and be weird. So what we're gonna do is uh, explain that. Now, if you accidentally uh, ruin your resolution setting, you can make the game appear all wonky and everything is like all in the wrong place on the screen and you can't click things, you can't change it back because the screen is completely messed up. Uh, many players have run into this bug with this drop down list. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. If you join the War Riders Discord, uh, let's do that by going to here, clicking here, there's a Discord invite. You're gonna be able to go into a certain channel and get some instructions. You don't need to talk to anybody but we'd love to have you. You can go into Discord, look in some instructions, and be like, okay, in the Info Rules channel, you're gonna look at pinned messages. Wait, you're gonna look at the tut, tut, tut. Here we go. If you experience issues with your game window being too small, you cannot adjust it, you can go to this folder, okay? Then there's an options.json file, which you can open with Notepad. Don't be afraid of this weird uh, file extension here. You just open it with notepad. Then you can see the parameters and those parameters might be hard coded to like 340 by 200 or some outrageous resolution. You can change that manually back. So you can change it to like 1280 by eight by uh, 720. Then you save the file, you know, using notepad and then you're good. 
So this is how you change this. You'll notice like all of these emojis are from people that it messed up the game. And this is how I discovered the Discord was that it messed up my game and now I'm in the Discord because of that. So maybe they're not gonna fix it because it's bringing more people to the Discord. I don't know, I can't speak to that. But we're ready to play the game. So I'm going to now uh, switch to 200% for my, uh, for my uh, UI scaling. And then we're gonna choose a car. So you're gonna see cars in your uh, menu system. You click on a car. And then you can click on play down here or press E. Now I have, you know, admittedly not even seen this. So I didn't even know how to launch into the game. And I had to go to Discord and be like, hey, how do you launch the game? Or I had to watch a YouTube video and watch them press this button or press E. I was like, oh my God, I'm so stupid. All right. So anyway, you're going to press a vehicle. Now you have a vehicle chosen that you're going to spawn into the wasteland. Okay. So over here you have your, your slots. Now each vehicle has a unique combination of slots. The really good vehicles uh, that are in the wasteland have more weapon slots, like for example, an SUV like this could have slots three by two. So three main guns, and this is a main gun up here that can go 360 degrees, like a true turret. And then alt guns down here. Uh, these are our hood guns that can only go in a forward arc. So they can go from here to here, and that's it. So it's, in, it's incredibly important when you're fighting vehicles in the wasteland to position your vehicle so that you're pointing at them, but they're not pointing at you. Then you'll be able to do the full damage of all your weapons, but they will only be able to attack you with their rear weapon. Does that make sense? All right. We're not going to be messing with the colors and the logos because that's my deal. Okay. For all my accounts, we have the specific colors that we, that we need to have. We have the specific logos that we need to have. These aren't supposed to be modified by other drivers. All right, now, uh, the reason why we have multiple vehicles in the garage here, we have two SUVs and a free van. Free van comes with uh, all accounts. If you already have your account set up and tied to your Ethereum address, you're going to notice that there is a van in your account, but the weapon slots will be empty if you don't have any premium weapons. You'll notice that my main weapon is, uh, it has, uh, you know, a stock weapon up here. It's, it, you know, it's not empty but this will not really do any damage at all. This is more like a placeholder weapon, so don't expect this to kill anything. But I have affixed deadly weapons to my uh, van, so people think that I have a normal van, but really this is a, quite a deadly van with this uh, level three Browning Alt that can run uh, 300 RPM with a stability five, very strong gun. So, so the reason we have multiple vehicles here is that uh, you will die in the wasteland and your vehicle will get it will get exploded and uh, that means that you'll have to re that you'll have to execute some repairs on that vehicle which will take some time we call that vehicle cooldown or cooldown and uh, depending on which weapons you have equipped at the time you will uh, be subject to different cooldown amounts so if you have rockets equipped on your main weapon up here then your cooldown will be low it will be three minutes and then you'll be able to respawn in the wasteland if you have guns with bullets, uh, they have uh, longer cooldowns. They take longer to repair in the garage after your vehicle gets destroyed. Uh, for browning weapons, those will be 10 minutes. And for miniguns, those will be about 13 minutes. It could be up to 13 minutes, depending. Uh, 8 to 10 for the brownings. So what this means is that you'll need multiple vehicles in your account so you can hot swap and immediately spawn again while your other vehicle is getting repaired. You'll see how the system works as we get into the wasteland. Uh, so this is how this screen works. We really don't really need to go into the weapons screen. This is really more for hoarders to look at what they have and be like, ooh, yay, I have the good skins. Look at these. They don't really, it's this screen helps nobody. Okay, and then same with garages. Unless you have garage tokens, this is just like a pretty screen with some photographs. We don't really care. So we're going to click on the vehicle. We're going to click play or we're going to press E and we're getting into the spawn screen. So now this is actually the first time in this video where you're going to see the map. And this is the map of the entire wasteland recently expanded in size. Okay. It used to be only this big and now it's even bigger. It's this big. And there's a lot of different pumps that you're going to see in the wasteland on the main map. When we're inside the wasteland, you're going to see other icons that indicate where crypto is located on the map. And you can always go to these locations and find crypto. You'll also likely find enemies that you'll need to kill, which makes the game fun and exciting. All right, this is our list of where we can spawn, okay? Now, you're watching a video made by me, 
Justin Ark. I'm in the Cryptomaniacs clan and part of the Dark Horizon Alliance. So I'm going to tell you about these different garages and what their relevance is to the political nature of the game and where all of these different clans are located and which garages are friendly and hostile. The Continental Garage is quite hostile, controlled by the Cryptic Knights, and they control some pumps that are around uh, that garage. If we spawn in the Continental, it's going to be pretty hot. The Bunker is a quite friendly garage that we pretty much control, and we control pumps near it, such as this one, this one, this one, and this one. The Bunker is a great base to spawn at. Gentleman's Club is another uh, garage that we control. We control the more north uh, garages. And you can spawn here. There are pumps nearby this garage too. OG is uh, pretty contested. I would call this a contested garage. Uh, you can spawn here sometimes. You can uh, encounter enemies most of the time. And uh, it's more of like a contested garage. Area 721 is very friendly garage. Uh, a lot of the time we're going to be controlling the pump to the south here. And almost all the time the Cryptomaniacs is controlling the rocks pump. So this is actually our primary spawning point. Uh, if you're rolling with our crew, you're going to be spawning in Area 721 most of the time. And we also meet up inside this base. You're going to see see this base in the in the satellite view. We meet up inside this base to do various attacks. We, we go out here and do an attacks. We're going out here doing attacks. So this is like our, our forward operating base, or FOB. And then Central is a very hostile garage, very hostile, uh, controlled by uh, the uh, Sprouts as well as the uh, cows. The cows are some of the most alpha apex predators in this game. If you see a cow, it's like seeing an agent in the matrix. You will not survive unless you're operating on the highest levels. They have very good equipment. They have very skilled players. Watch out for cows, uh, but they control this, this garage and the pumps surrounding this garage, like the one over here, uh, the one over here, probably most of the time, that kind of thing. So we're going to choose our friendly neighborhood area 721, which is where we're going to be spawning 90% of the time, unless we say otherwise. And we're going to click spawn. Here's a loading screen. It's loading. Wow. That was a lot of uh, preliminary uh, education for getting into the wasteland, but it's necessary for new players. So hopefully you learned a lot. Probably did. We spawn inside this garage. What you're going to want to do is immediately exit this area. If you do not exit this area, the game will despawn you okay it will assume that that there's something wrong with your controls or something wrong with your game and it will despawn you so you need to leave this area asap okay now we're driven out here we are in what's called the safe zone right now the safe zone is protected by these lasers these lasers are neutral and their job is to protect all vehicles in the area not just friendly not just enemy but all vehicles and prevent fights from getting too close to the garage because the point of the game is to fight for the crypto out there in the wasteland not near the garage so that's why these lasers are around you don't really want to be firing your weapons at any vehicles because if these lasers detect that you are harming players they will open fire on you and they will kill you immediately this is not fun for you so you want to leave the safe zone and keep the fighting out there we're going to exit what we're calling main gate right now. This is called main gate, the front main gate. There's a road right here. That's why we call it main gate. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to show you what we call secondary gate. Secondary gate is the most common gate that we go to when we're going to run attacks on external nodes that are controlled by the enemy. We assemble here at secondary gate. So when you hear people saying secondary gate, secondary gate, then you're going to want to go over here. So let me just kind of see, show you. Uh, we're going through the barracks here. That was secondary gate right there. And then uh, you can see here that if we're turning a left after spawning in those garage, uh, garage bays up here, that's how we get to secondary gate. And then we have a third gate uh, exiting from the uh, 721 base called Rocks Gate. This is called Rocks Gate. This is the third gate, and this is the most friendly gate. This is going to lead us in this direction towards our pump that the Cryptomaniacs control called Rocks Pump, okay? So what I'm going to do is going to drive out, and I'm going to show you kind of how the system works before we get into a couple fights. I'm going to show you, like, how to swap weapons and uh, how to kill somebody. So we can see some friendlies out here. Check it out. Oh, look, it's the Spiz. What up, the Spiz? There he is. He's in his vehicle, roaming around, protecting Rocksgate. And then we have some other vehicles over here. 
keeping an eye out. We have Arc 2 out here. We have Arc 7 out here. These are going to be other people that are in the Cryptomaniacs clan that are protecting the pump. Let's go to the pump, okay? There's a tank over here protecting the pump. That's going to be Arc 5. And you can see what the pump looks like. It looks like a monolith, like a stone monolith. And it has a number on it that has the uh, amount of benzene available at that pump, which is most of the time going to be zero. This logo is going to light up every three to five minutes with a random amount of benzene tokens that can be claimable by pressing E and then it goes into your vehicle in the top left of the screen. You can see the BZN meter that will fill up kind of like a gas tank in your car. So we have some more vehicles that are keeping lookout here at Rocks Pump. And uh, right over here we have, oh, this business joined us again and we see Arc 3. So you'll, you'll notice that uh, these players are pretty spaced out and far away from the pump and only one vehicle is at the pump. There's a reason for that. And the reason is that there was a recently new logic upgrade that makes the pump detect when there's too many vehicles in the area. And in an anti-camping measure, it will not disperse money, not disperse money. And there's no warning system or detection. So we need to make sure that vehicles are far away from the pump and not close to the pump. Uh, a maximum of two vehicles should be nearby it. Uh, this will prevent the anti-camping measures from firing off. Okay, so uh, here we are at the rocks pump. There's a few attack directions that I can let you know what they are. Over here in this direction that I'm looking right now, bringing up our map, you can see that there's a few pumps. Uh, I can't move my mouse while I have the map open, but you can see there's a few pumps that I'm looking at. You'll see that my circle is to the left part of the map. You'll see a circle with like a little uh, arrow. It sh I wish it wasn't white. I wish it were like, like cyan or, or or green lime green so you can see it better but you'll see in the gray blotch you'll see the rocks pump hexagon and then you'll see uh um yeah you'll see the rocks pump hexagon and then you'll see my icon so you'll see a couple pumps that i'm pointing at that i'm looking at uh, those are usually hostile pumps that we like to attack that's in this direction and then over here is the gentleman's club garage with some northern bases that we control we control some northern pumps right here a northern pump here here and way out there way out there all right so let's go to the other pump that is nearby to uh the 721 base now this pump i i tend to call this pump contested because there are definitely many times when oh there are definitely many times when it's controlled by the enemy but there's also many times when it's controlled by our alliance and you'll see different clans that are in our alliance that you're not supposed to shoot uh, those clans because we're all friends and we help control vast areas of the map together. You'll also notice that I'm driving at approximately 140 miles an hour, which is not accurate, not accurate. The speed metrics are inflated in this game. It's about a four to one. So if I'm driving 100 miles an hour in this game, I'm actually going 25 in real life. But uh, your vehicles may be slower than mine and probably will i have some alpha apex predator vehicles that can run down pretty much any vehicle on the map except lamborghinis with those lambos will uh they'll get to speeds of upwards of 200 miles an hour which is faster than my uh, suv can handle but uh your vehicles will definitely be a comfortable speed i definitely did not skimp spared no expense so you'll be able to keep up with most vehicles so we just exited main gate that was main gate that we just left and now we are making our way over to what we call Port side or port side. Oh, we got one enemy hovercraft here. Let's kill him. Opening up rockets. Switching to guns. You'll notice that we have some heat meters building up around our targeting reticle. And that heat meter is telling us if our gun is going to overheat. Uh, that enemy died because I'm good at the game and the enemy is not. Uh, also, the weapons will not be able to fire if you fire them too long and overheat them then you're gonna have to use other weapons for a time until those those weapons cool cool off. So a lot of these fights are actually uh, heat management fights and they're not necessarily aiming fights or speed fights because you can see that the game was moving pretty slowly. This is not Apex, this is not even Halo. Uh, you can't just like dodge bullets. So the name of the game is have really strong weapons and manage your heat correctly, as well as have good slots. So you'll see by holding Q, uh, my weapons here, I have a two by two vehicle and I have two rockets equipped up here. 
one main, one alt, and I have two uh, browning weapons down here, one main, one alt. So I can fire all rockets. Let's do that right now and kill this enemy. I can fire all rockets, and then when I press R and F, it switches to my other guns. R switches my main gun, and F switches my alt gun. And I'm able to fire on these gun on these cars, and you know, do oh that was a friendly. Okay, let's finish off this guy right here. Um, now you'll notice what I'm doing right now. You see, I'm positioning my vehicle so that I'm looking at him, but he's not looking at me. Then I can fire all my weapons on him, but he can only fire one we one of his weapons on me. And that is what wins fights, ladies and gentlemen. That friendly Lambo just took care of that bad boy. He did. So let's go back to the pump here. I'm going to show you how to mine some benzene. Now, because you'll be playing in a clan environment, you will not need to take care of the mining aspect of this, but I'm going to show you how it actually works. Look at that timing. I'm going to press E. I'm going to hold it down, and that's going to deliver the benzene from the pump into my tank. And now I'm ready to deliver this money to our our squad. So if you happen across some money, like for example, some money on a pump in a pump or some money on the ground, uh, you'll need to know how to deliver that money or what to do after you get that money. So uh, normally, if you're playing solo with your own vehicles and weapons, you'll be able to deliver this money into a garage by driving directly back into a garage bay. You can see right there that logo. Uh, if you drive back into the garage, you'll re-enter uh, the menu screen. Your vehicle will instantly gain full health. You'll notice right now my health is at 55%. Uh, but uh, you'll also be able to uh, release your benzene into your wallet account by pressing R. Uh, now let's go into the garage so I can show you how this process works. I'm not going to actually do the process. So uh, you can see how in a clan environment, how to uh, deal with money and handle money. So we're driving into the garage now. You'll notice that uh, the vehicle will be fully repaired when we respawn. And you'll also notice that we have some money that's here available in our vehicle. And if we press, oh, not R, okay, if we press F, to release the benzene, it's going to deposit that benzene out of our vehicle's tank and into the account balance. Right now, that's my account balance, safe and sound, not able to be stolen by the enemy. This balance is currently inside the vehicle. It can be stolen by the enemy if I am killed in the field, unless I press F, release BZN. I'm not going to press it. I'm going to respawn back in with full health and I'm going to deliver this money to what we call the miners. The miners are special vehicle accounts within a clan that store money so that we can save on fees and have proper accounting when we are uh, dealing with, you know, paying drivers as well as arms dealers who lend their equipment to the clan for use in exchange for benzene rewards. So I just respawned uh, 721. That was called 721 lower level, lower level. You can also spawn 721 in the upper level. As you could see those garage bays up there that you noticed earlier. We're leaving Rock's Gate and we're approaching Rock's Pump and we're going to deliver the money that you can see in the top left of the screen. And we're gonna deliver that money to the miner, okay? So the miner accounts currently at least in our clan, the Cryptomaniacs, are Cryptomaniac, naturally, and Alpha Ceph. Both of those accounts are miners, and they come up to the pump when there's money. So we're gonna just drop this money off right here on the ground. I'm gonna fire rockets on the ground to let them know, hey, something's going on, look at me. And I'm going to hold down escape, which will execute the self-destruct in the lower left. You can see that in the lower left right there. It executes the self-destruct. And now I'm self-destructed. You'll also notice that my vehicle is dead. I dropped that money on the ground when I died. And our allies will come and pick that up and uh, bring it to the bank. So you'll see here, this is the cooldown meter. This is telling me how long it's going to take the garage to repair my busted-ass vehicle. Uh, because I had rockets equipped when I died, the cooldown is low at about three minutes. But if I had my high-powered bullet guns, like my browning guns equipped that would have been a higher number maybe eight to ten minutes for a cooldown on that so because i have specialized vehicles with both uh, rockets and guns i make sure to time when i'm about to die make sure i'm i have rockets equipped then my cooldown will be low sometimes the enemy is is uh tricky 
and they kill me before I have a chance to switch back to rockets, and then my cooldown is high, and I get very upset. That can happen from time to time. So here's a cooldown uh, meter as well. This is why we have two vehicles. We can spawn our second vehicle right away, no problem. We are waiting for the other one to get repaired, no problem. All right, so now let's do uh, one more mission. We're gonna go to a very hostile pump. I'm gonna, I'm gonna re refresh you on some uh, combat mechanics real quick, and then we will wrap this video up. So we are now going over here and we're going to attack a very hostile pump. Uh, this pump is controlled by Team Club, AKA Ratness, uh, which is a very strong uh, clan, very similar in strength to the Cals. And uh, these vehicles are not easy to kill. So we're going to go up here and we're going to access our map. You can see that I'm driving and you can see my, my icon moving on the map. It's kind of in that brown splotch down to the southish type area and I'm approaching a base called Middle Hangar. Now, all of these pumps have uh, names that I will show you in uh, the Discord. There's a map graphic uh, that shows all of the names of stuff. Oh man, that's that's a very strong gold SUV. Okay, here we go. So we're opening rockets, and uh, you know I have calibrated rockets, so they're extra deadly, which is rare in the game. Switching the guns, you can see my health is is, is, is going way down, way down. And uh, he's not dead yet. He's not dead yet. I'm dead. Okay, so he killed me pretty, pretty fast. And this is pretty common with uh, the strongest accounts. You know, it's very hard for me to do a tutorial video and also like actually kill these guys. But in most of the time, I might have died anyway because that's one of their strongest, uh, one of their strongest accounts. So, yeah, let's spawn a van and let's look at uh, another. Bot. Okay, so here's uh, OG is not really good for the van. Let's okay. Let's just do central. I'll show you probably some cows that are creeping around. So that's how you choose where to spawn. You you look at that drop down list and then you choose different garages. And now we're in our van. Now remember our van is useless. It's very low health as well. But I do have one deadly gun on it, and so I might be able to you know annoy briefly one of these enemies before they take me out. So see, there's one outside of the safe zone firing on me. Uh, and I'm trying to get outside of the safe zone so I don't get lasered, but oh, See that laser? You see that? That laser targeted me and killed me along with the enemy Cal. And that's because I did not leave the safe zone in time. So now we have our other vehicle that's done. Uh, let's just do one more quick battle. Let's, let's go back to Fort Side. I think uh, there's probably some enemies that will come back into the area. But this is, this is the general basics. Uh, this is not like main gameplay because main gameplay involves playing with the squad, like in voice chat, uh, doing, you know, complex missions and engaging in, in team play and strategy. This is more like an intro of like how things work. But remember your most important uh, aspects of combat are heat management and positioning. You need to make sure that your guns are not overheating, okay? Sprout one, here we go. We're firing on Sprout one, opening rockets. Our heat is building up. We don't wanna get overheated. We wanna switch guns now, R and F. We're pressing R and F. Oh, we gotta switch back to rockets. We almost got heat overheated there. And we have a friend who helped kill that guy. Great, great. And I think we have one more enemy around this mountain. So let's go back to rockets, R and F. And then let us uh, kill, nope, that's a friend. Hey, watch yourself, boy. All right, let's wait for another enemy here at the pump. So when we're in what's called defense positions, okay, notice there's three of us here and we are too close to the pump. Okay, the pump will not dispense money. I need to get farther away so that the pump does not uh, execute its anti-camping measures, okay? Now we have three vehicles again. Now, uh, MGT, who's in our squad, and then we have Tester and Alien. They are in Alliance squads. They're not in our squad, but they are... They are allies. And then uh, we're waiting for more enemies to show up. And we'll engage into another battle, okay? So we got Arc-9. He's getting followed. Let's save his life. We're going to open up guns this time. We're going to open up guns. Oh, he got lasered. He got lasered because he fired on vehicles inside the safe zone. That's how that works. All right. I don't know why they were firing on me. Okay. That's all fine. So now we're here defending uh, Fort Side with... 
uh, MGT and Arc-9, along with a couple allies. Now this is part of the game. Part of the game is just defend and wait. But you'll notice that uh, it's 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 rarely uh, boring for long. Ooh, you'll notice that this guy, Sprout Boss, he's killing me pretty fast. I was also not paying attention. That's definitely my fault. But that's going to end the video here. Uh, hopefully now you know how this all works. You know all the tips and tricks to get started. Uh, this is just a rough cut intro video. It's not like polished in any type of a way. It's just me talking to you. But hope you, hopefully you enjoyed and learned some things. So, you know, feel free to refer to this video if you get stuck anywhere. Also, you can use the voice chats to uh, ask people questions about how things work. But that's it. War Riders is really fun. You'll have a great time. Uh, we have accounts I, I, at the Cryptomaniacs. We have accounts you can use. You don't have to buy NFTs. You don't have to buy uh, vehicles and weapons. Even if you did, you would need to spend top dollar in order to, to combat the top enemies in the game. So uh, you can feel free to use our strong accounts and uh, enjoy. Welcome to the Cryptomaniacs. Thank you.